Check out these words of Jesus. It's in Matthew chapter 7. He says in verse 13, he says, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Pretty sober words from Jesus, from Yeshua, right? I mean, basically, simply put, He's saying that many people take the easy path in life, but few choose the one that is difficult. Years ago, I was working out at this gym and the gym that I was working out at, there was a guy that I would see there just about every morning and we get in conversations and got to know me a little bit. I got to know him and something he told me eventually was he says, you have what's called the disease to please. And I never heard the disease to please before. I'm like, what's that? And he says, you're a people pleaser. And he says, I'm going to get you a book that I have and, and um, I want you to read it. So, he, he, he uh, got me a copy of that book, and when I read that book, I'm like, wow, that actually describes me pretty well. I was a people pleaser. I needed to make sure that people liked me, that I didn't stand up for myself. I, you know, there were times I'd stand up for myself, but it's where I would get so upset. Things would bottle up that I would explode. Kind of like if you were to shake up a champagne bottle, you know, and you, you, <clears throat> you pop the cork and it goes all over the place. You know, there would be times where I'd build up tension and then I would just go off. But I wasn't very consistent with standing up for myself and not in a proper healthy way because there is a healthy way you can stand up for yourself. Today there's many of us that are convicted. Convicted that we don't want to get the you know what put in us. There are others that are convicted that they should get the you know what put in them because they find that it's healthy and it saves lives. But there's others that are questioning the you know what, and there's word that the you know what, all three of the you know what's, you know you guys know what I'm talking about, I have to speak this way. Word has it, studies have it, I've done the research myself and it seems that all three of the you know what's that you can choose from have what's called aborted fetus in it. Now. Am I right about that? What I've studied, is it right or is it wrong? I, I, From what I see, it seems like it. Now, there's people that are pro-abortion and there's people that are pro-life. What's your conviction? Because many that are convicted that they don't want to receive the you-know-what is because it goes against their faith-based beliefs. You might call it religious beliefs. And so what they're doing to protect them at their jobs for their careers is getting legal paperwork that says this thing is against my faith-based or religious beliefs and I cannot conscientiously participate in receiving it. And it's working for many people. There's a woman on YouTube called Patriot Nurse. Patriot Nurse, she's a nurse. And she explains 
a lot of this legal stuff that, you know, if you need legal documents, you might want to look into it if your conviction is not to receive the you know what. Now, I know a bunch of Christians that I have spoken to that I know personally, and the majority of the ones that I personally know have received the you know what in them. One lady even told me that yes, it does contain aborted fetus, but she says, but it's from a, a long, long, long time ago. They're still using the remains of one or something like that. It was just, oh, okay. And if that's her conviction, that's her conviction. Like me, I'm, I'm convicted to go to the gym. I like to go work out at a gym. So I go there almost daily but I don't put my conviction on other people or look down at other people that aren't convicted the same way that I am, right? It's my conviction, it's personal for me. Just like I have a personal relationship with God. I got out of religion and got into relationship and I am convicted the way I'm convicted. There's some things that I change my mind on which changing your mind is healthy because if your mind is thinking one way and it needs changing, well, that's metanoia in Greek. That's what the Bible translates to repentance, metanoia, or meta, even metanoeo, which means changing mind, changing the way you think, change the way you think. And I've found myself changing the way I think many times and still needing to change the way I think, especially about things that are weighing me down that I was... I'm holding on to. So what the Lord's been helping me with is purging these things out of my life and staying purged instead of being the dog that returns to its own vomit. Because there's things that are unnecessary for me that I'm convicted personally about that I don't want to hold on to or keep on repeating in my life that I need to purge and let them stay purged. And a lot of people are sensing this in these times that we're in right now. The reason I'm talking about people pleasing is because a lot of people want to please others because they're afraid of what others might think of them. And so they may be convicted not to get the you know what, but they do it anyway because they're afraid what people are going to say about them. The persecution that comes, didn't it Jesus also, didn't Yeshua also say you will be persecuted on account of my name. You will be hated on account of my name. Because of me, family members are going to turn against you on account of my name. And you might not want that to happen, right? Now, I'm not here to judge or to tell you what you need to do about refusing to get or receiving the you know what today but I've already lost plenty of subscribers on my channel just because I'm not convicted to get the you know what and because they have received the you know what they're offended by me even though I haven't put them down I didn't say it's the mark of the beast I, I did say I believe that they are preparing us they are doing a warm-up this is a prelude for us to receive what's coming, right? You can't go anywhere, you can't buy, you can't sell, you can't go grocery shopping, you can't go to the gym, you can't go to work unless you receive the, the mark of the beast. I'm not convinced that, that th this thing is the mark, but I do believe it is the beginning. They're getting people prepared to receive whatever they throw at you and they're going to guilt you into it. They're going to fear you into it and they are going to shame you into it. I don't want to lose people. I don't want to lose family. I don't want to lose my job. And hey, I don't want to lose mine either, right? But I'm not going to let myself get bullied and I'm not going to do this people pleasing thing anymore so I can make everybody happy and do what's against my conscience. I mean, listen, you guys. I've shared videos about my dad. Maybe you got to see my dad yesterday. I made a video with him in the video. And many of you guys were praying for him. He was in the hospital for almost a full week. Emergency. He had to get emergency to the hospital. 
and it just so happened his pulse rate was super low. It was in the 30s and his blood pressure was super high and he thought he was gonna die. And this is a man that's not scared of nothing and he was afraid, right? So I had you guys praying and lifting him up in prayer and guess what? He got home and I went over there yesterday. I picked him up. We went and had breakfast at my sister, my younger sister Angie's house. I made steaks for everybody and we, it was cool. We got to hang out together and then I took my dad home and on the way home, I said, that, Dad, let's make a little video. You know, so we did. But when my dad was in the hospital, you guys, everybody in my family has received the you know what, everybody. So they got to go visit my dad at the hospital, show him love, show him that they cared. But I was the only one that wasn't allowed to go to the hospital because the hospital's not allowing anybody to go in there unless they got the you know what. Now there's a lot of people that might think, you know what, you're, you're a selfish dude. You mean you don't care about your father enough? You could have lost your father in death and never seen him again and never say goodbye to him because you weren't willing to get that you know what put in you. Sacrifice your convictions so that you could show your dad that you love and care about him. But I have to stand by my faith, my personal faith. Not what I expect you to do, but what my conviction for me personally is. And it wasn't easy to not be able to go see my dad, lay hands on him, pray for him. But I couldn't get bullied into it and I couldn't compromise you guys. There's a lot of tests going on and they're not easy. And Jesus didn't promise an easy breezy life if you are a follower of his. He said, you'll be persecuted because of my name. You'll be hated because of my name. Even your own family will turn against you on account of my name, for my name's sake. I get a lot of messages quite often from people. And um, I don't have my, my, my phone number is not made public but I do have my email address that's public because people want to know how to contact me. Some people like to give gifts to me. How can I gift you? So I have my Venmo and my uh, uh, PayPal that I make public and it's not because I'm begging or asking for money. People just ask me all the time so I make it public on my, my videos. I answer a lot of questions on my videos because when I'm driving, I find that's my best way to utilize time because I have a lot of stuff that I have to get done in my personal life. So I get asked a lot of questions sometimes by people that are maybe new to my channel. They saw maybe a video of mine and, oh, so what's your conviction about this? And they send me an email with a bunch of questions about different Bible verses and they want answers to a bunch of stuff. And they might not know that I have already covered those things in my videos. And maybe I haven't covered everything just yet. I, I had a channel that got hacked. You guys that have been following me for a while, you know that my previous Ultimate Mordecai channel got hacked. And I had almost a thousand videos on there. Started back in 2016. Then right at the beginning of 2020, it, somebody hacked me and they deleted all my videos. So I had to start over again. But I try to answer the best that I can. I don't know everything about everything in the Bible and I don't have all the answers to your questions. And I try to answer and respond to emails as quickly as I possibly can. And I try to keep the answers as short as possible, be, not because you're a waste of my time, but just because I have lots of stuff to answer, to reply to, right? And I'm not saying it's a burden, but sometimes I can't answer the things that people want, the way that people want me to. Sometimes I say, just scroll through my videos, check out the titles, and maybe that'll answer your question because the things that you're asking me is exactly what I've covered over and over again. 
I even get people that have been watching me for a while saying, hey man, why are your comments down? I can't comment on your channel. Why are they turned off? Well, I just recently made a video explaining it. You know, YouTube comes to me and they, 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 they send they send emails and you know, there's a lot of rules and restrictions, man. And you get strikes. They were talking about a strike on my channel because of a, of a um, probably content or something. And they, they even talk about how as a, cre a, a, a channel creator, it's my responsibility to keep track of the comments that are even being made. I even have to let YouTube, every time I upload a video, I have to let them know if this video is the content for children or what they call kids, I think. Is it made for kids? And you have to put no. Although there are kids, there are children that watch these videos. I have families that say we all watch them together. Now, if there's comments that are being made that are totally inappropriate, and there are, there, there has been so many. And when I get comments, you know, on the channel, the cha I get emails that alert me about, oh, there were comments on the channel. And, you know, and I, I try my best to respond to everybody's comment, you know, at least love the comment or like it or respond to it. But right now, the comment section, it's actually because of my life, the busyness that I have, I'm in the middle of trying to publish a book. And even the, the publishing company, they're trying to relaunch a book I already published years ago. So I'm going to a new company and they keep sending me, I need to keep, I need all these homework assignments they got me. So every day they've got videos that I need to watch and the videos are long. And that's not counting all the videos I'm sent by my viewers on YouTube. You got to watch this video, watch this video, watch this video, watch this video. I get videos sent to me all day, every day, all day, every day. And people want me to know, did you watch the video yet? How come? What are you, what's taking you to so long? You know, and it's like, ugh. So I shut my comment section down. Because you know what? I still want to be able to keep this stuff going on YouTube. And I have to be very cautious the way I say things. And I also don't have time to be keeping track of who's making comments and what they're saying in those comments. And there's some believers that say some cuss words that are really bad. And there's people that personally come after me and attack me as well. So I just, it's made my life simpler right now. I shut down the comments and it's maybe offended a bunch of people. Now I've, I've had people unsubscribe and especially because I talk about the, you know what, I'm not telling people don't get it or anything. I'm just talking about it because it's what's going on and there's some people that are very very offended how dare you not get the you know what are you an anti you know whater for me personally I'm anti this one for myself what you choose that's up to you but for me for myself I am and I share those views because there's plenty of others that are anti that too so I help, I, hopefully it, it helps them as well to let them know that they're not alone. So I can't people please with everybody. I'm letting you know, you know what, you got it. This is the time you can't people please either. You can't please everybody. On the way to the gym earlier today, there's a car right next to me, this white car right next to me. I'm driving and suddenly I'm watching this car getting closer and closer and closer to my car. I slam my brakes and they're just about to hit me. I mean, I'm like, hit my brakes. And I, I had to lay on the horn. Wake up because they're about to hit my car and that horn did nothing. They barely, it's almost, I was waiting for their car to hit the front of my car. But because I was skidding out, their car didn't hit me. And there was no wave of apology from them or nothing. It just kept going. And when I came to, and said, we were coming to a light to turn left. I was in the left lane. They were in the right lane next to me. And when I pulled up to the light, I'm looking over, not to like be mad dogging or nothing like that. My windows are kind of dark anyway, so I don't think they can see me. I was just like, did something wrong? Did somebody fall asleep? I'm, it was like they were, they had must have fallen asleep and the person was staring at their cell phone didn't even acknowledge that they had gotten honked at and that they had swerved in and, and almost smashed into my car. If I was not paying attention, I would have been in a car accident earlier today. Was it mean of me to honk on my horn? Oh, you noise pollution guy? No, I was alerting them. I was doing them a favor. Do you understand that? 
And if that wasn't people pleasing them, oh, that jerk honking at me, what's wrong with him? Uh, huh. That's their problem. But I wasn't doing it to be a hater. I was doing it out of love, honestly, because they could have lost my li their life. There could have been something bad that happened. Who knows? So you got to stand up for yourself, you guys. You don't have to do it mean. Sometimes I know we retaliate. I retaliate sometimes too and I get angry and you, it's like you just blow up. I don't want to be that way, of course, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Trying to practice patience and practice love and all that stuff. But I'm telling you, man, if you're convicted today, people are going to turn against you and they already are. And there's persecution going on around the world against Christians like you wouldn't believe right now. They are being slaughtered. They are underground in many different areas and they are being tortured and slaughtered. And if you're caught practicing your faith, they're coming after people that are believers, my friends. We got to stay strong in these times and we can't kowtow. We can't bow down to them and say, you're right. I cave in. I know. Easier said than done. Oh, God. We got to rely on the strength of the Lord, you guys. And stand by what he has convicted you of. You might be convicted because you're a religious person. And you might say, well, I stand for my false religious belief. You don't believe it's false. I came out of false religion, so I know what I'm talking about. What I was convicted of before, the Lord Jesus woke me up from that. And I followed it was like he was knocking on the door of my heart and I finally let him in. Anyway, I just hope this message has been a blessing to you. You don't got to be a people pleaser like that book, that book that guy gave me that said you got the disease to please. <laughs> and I think that's probably a lot of us, but you also don't need to be a jerk as well. You know what I'm saying? You got to find some pr proper balance there. But even Jesus says, you're going to be hated because of me. And that road to life, it's not, it's not easy breezy. It's narrow. It's difficult. That other road, that's the one that the majority is taking because it's so easy to follow. You know what I'm saying? I choose the road that's narrow and difficult. What about you? God bless you guys. I love you. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for your prayers for my dad and he appreciates them too. And uh, I'll see you again in the next video.